Hi everyone, it's Tanya Gibbs and today I want to share with you a process video creating a mixed media tag with the Seaside theme. I'm going to use products from Lenny's Stamp Gang today. We're going to start with the Glory of the Seas Gold, the Cosmopolitan Pink, and the Tiffany's Blue. So in my last video I shared with you guys how I create my tags uh, with the Tim Holtz die and some manila cardstock. So just like before, I am going to uh, color this tag with gesso to prep the surface. Now I'm going to use the Faber-Castell Design Memory Craft Double Scoop Gelato in the snow cone and the uh, iced chai. The iced chai has a really nice metallic finish to it and these two are going to blend out very pastel and soft and just a really nice uh, base for my shabby chic tag. So I'm using a baby wipe to smooth out the color and to blend it out and since the surface is prepped they do go a little bit lighter than their natural concentration so I may add a few layers of color here. Also the baby wipe does keep the color uh, more transparent as well. So now I'm going to use this Hero Art Stamp. It's called Friendship Message and I'm going to use the Stamper's Big Brush Artist Pen in the Nougat number 178 to uh, color up my stamp and to add just a little bit of texture to my background and interest. Uh, now I'm going to use the Faber-Castell Design Memory Craft Gel Medium uh, right here in the center for my adhesive. I'm applying it rather thick. This is the uh, cobweb netting that I got last year for Halloween. I like it better than cheesecloth because the uh, holes in the netting are a little bit wider. Now that it's Halloween season again, take a look around your stores. You may be able to find some pretty inexpensive. Um, this is the Faber-Castell Design Memory Craft Textural Accent Glass Bead Glitter Gel. It's going to go on with a creamy white texture and then it's going to dry clear but it's going to have the glass bead texture to it as well as some blue green iridescent glitter. So uh, I'm going to really like that. It's going to give my C some nice uh, shiny spots. This is just a piece of scrap that I'm prepping with uh, gesso and I'm going to use the stamp set from Pink Paisley. This is from the Nantucket collection. It has been discontinued but when I was cleaning my room I found it and decided I wanted to center this entire tag's theme around the seahorse. So um, I encourage you to go through your stamps. Maybe there's one you've forgotten about and you could use it to create a tag. So I've used my Stamper's Big Brush Artist Pen to color up my seahorse. I'm going to dry him really well with the heat tool there and then spritz him with the Lindy Stamp Gang in the Tiffany's Blue. That's going to offer a nice iridescence to his uh, coloring. Now I'm going to tap off the residual ink onto my tag and uh, that way it has a nice splattered look and then use my baby wipe to blend the color in on my seahorse. Once he's completely dry I'm going to fussy cut him out. For those of you who are challenged with fussy cutting notice that what I'm doing is holding my scissors still but I'm rocking the paper back and forth with my left hand uh, so that I can get a really nice beveled edge on my cuts and it just makes fussy cutting go so much easier. Uh, and, and you also want to make sure you have a really nice sharp pair of scissors. I love to uh, fussy cut with these scissors. They are made by EK Success and they are the Cuddlebug scissors. I think they've recently given them a new, uh, an upgraded look. So they're a little different color now. But just look for the EK Success brand. They make really nice detailed cutting scissors. So now I am going to go ahead and see if I can't find placement for my seahorse there and uh, go ahead and add some color to the back of my tag. Again I'm using the Tiffany's Blue from Lindy Stamp Gang and it has a really nice iridescent blue shimmer to it. So that's going to be my seaside and then I'm also going to use a, a jelly roll pen there with a piece of really thick foam and um, that this is going to give rocking this around the edges of my seahorse it's going to make him kind of curl up and give him a little bit of depth 
so that he is not so flat looking. Now I am going to apply my shells to the base down below. I'm going to use the uh, Stampers Big Brush, or excuse me, the Faber Castell Design Memory Craft Glass Bead Glitter Gel as my adhesive for my stamp uh, for my shells. Since it dries clear, you won't see it, but you will get that effect of water pulled up around my shells. And now I'm going to take, these are just some Prima flowers that were in the bucket on my desk. Uh, I'm not even sure which collection they came from. I just happen to have three of them, so I'm going to apply them here with a little bit of the gel medium uh, and a popsicle stick. And they were really closed up tight, so what I'm doing is I'm opening them up so that they look more like they've bloomed. Um, and then I'm applying them to my tag. And I'm twisting that... Uh, wire stem back around the back so that it's not seen from the front of the tag. So now I'm going to take the Cosmopolitan Pink from Lende Stamp Gang to color up my uh, flowers. It has a really nice coral look to it so um, it's going to add a really nice shabby chic look to these flowers. I'm going to just make sure that's good and dry before I go to the next step. And now I'm going to take the Glory of the Seas Gold and I'm going to finish off the bottom of my tag with that. Now I did feel that it was just a little too brassy and too yellow so I'm just going to dilute it down with a little bit of water. And that's going to help to um, desaturate some of that color, the pigment in the spray. I found these clear sequins and I thought they reminded me of fish scales. And then I also found in my stash these gold mica flakes from Sam Pendus. So I'm going to combine the two together and I'm going to add them to my tag. And I'm just going to brush a little bit of that gel medium around the tag again. The thing I really love about using the gel medium here is that it dries completely clear. So if it, there's a little overspray, it doesn't matter. It also helps to protect the surface a little bit to you know keep it um, from you know these watercolors from bleeding so I'm gonna spread all of this out and it seems like an awful lot right now but I'm gonna later tap off those stuff that doesn't get stuck by the by the glue just like you would with glitter it's just bigger flakes <laughs> so think of these mica flakes as just bigger glitter and I just love the way they look they kind of remind me of the abalone shells a little because it's super shiny and I always call the abalone shells the jewels of the sea. Uh, they make a lot of jewelry out of that type of shell. Uh, and then in my bucket on my desk, my little scrap bucket, I had a little package of uh, small micro beads and I thought that they would add a really nice texture to this tag as well. So I'm just using up the things that I can find on my desk. Uh, that's really what my goal is whenever I am making these tags is to go through that pile and try to thin it out as much as possible. Uh, I had, I've been cleaning up my desk area and my scrap piles lately. I, I get really lazy when I go to clean my desk and sometimes just throw things into boxes or buckets around my desk. So it's time to start thinning out the herd as you, as you would call it. Now these are some shells. I had, they're starfish shells. They're actually I think charms that are painted this really bright blue and green and they were just a little bit too bright for me but I wanted to use them up because they've been in that bucket for ages and you know it just time for them to go so what I did was I painted them with gesso and then I spritzed them with that glory of the seas gold and then now I'm applying them to my tag I'm coming back over all of the elements here with a little bit of the dried gesso that's on my sponge. I don't believe I added any new gesso. It was just what was in the sponge. And that's going to give my tag a really nice uh, shabby chic look. You're going to really see those, those white spots. And to me that white just looks like sea foam. So again, up at the top where the netting is, I'm adding a little bit more gesso up there. And now I'm going to come back over the top of that gesso and add some of this glass bead glitter gel. And that's just going to put the sparkle into the gesso. 
and give my waves that watered look. Here you can see that it's kind of dried a little bit up at the top so it's no longer bright white. Now I'm going to find placement for some larger shells and uh, I just bought these shells at a local craft store and I, I like that they have multiple sizes in them really inexpensive and I use them all the time living here in Florida we do a lot of outings to the beach and things like that so I'm, I'm, it's nice to have the little a little bowl of shells at, at hand so I'm just gonna use those to as filler around my tag around my floral spray there uh, and I'm just making sure that I you know leave leave space so that you can still see the netting I still want to see all the mica flakes and I want to see those uh, clear sequins as well but I did not want to see the transition between the shells and the flowers because I wanted these flowers to look like um, you know patches of these flowers that you see around the beach here in Florida so um, now I'm just going to take a little bit of gesso and col color over the top of all of the shells. To me, the shells were just a little too perfect and clean compared to the rest of the tag. So I, I, this is just my attempt to make everything sort of blend in a little bit better. Now I'm going to glue that little horse, uh, seahorse's tail down to the top of that shell. Uh, now he has a nice anchored area there. So for my... Uh, sentiment for my tag. I've decided to use this uh, labels punch from EK Success and my quote is actually a, a little bit of scripture. It says, uh, mightier than the waves of the sea is his love for you and that's Psalm 93 4. I love to use scriptures in my scrapbooking and I also love to use uh, scriptures on my layouts and things like that. My uh, mixed media canvases and things I find it very inspirational so um, it was nice to be able to add this to this tag and the hook that I'm going to use to adhere this to the tag is a uh, Christmas tree ornament hanger so I want to make sure that that ink is really good and dry that's a jelly roll black pen then I'm going to spritz it with the glory of the seas gold and dab it up just a little bit and then color it on the back side uh, the, you know you really want to make sure that your ink is very good and dry when you do this I'm gonna have to trim down my little hook I had to trim the back side of the hook off because uh, m with the glue in place it would not um, penetrate the glued area under the flowers so I needed to uh, trim it down a little bit use wire cutters not your Timmy scissors for that uh, now I'm taking the archival ink in the potting soil and I've uh, distressed the edges there to just kind of make everything look a little more aged and more like wood I'm just dragging that uh, sponge across the top of my tag there and that gives it like a, a, a semi wood grain finish. It really just kind of helps to add a little bit of texture to that sign and make it look a little more weathered. So now I'm going to uh, add a little bit of foam tape to the back that's going to hold my hook in place as well. And you know, I really. I like the spiral look of this hook because it, uh, to me, it reminds me of some of the elements you find around the beach. You always see things coiled up. You always see, you know, these these types of things, and 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 I like the the metal effect. But I didn't want the metal to be the first thing you saw when you looked at this tag. So I'm just going to camouflage it a little bit with some shells, and maybe a little bit of the mica flakes as well as the sequins and I'm just gonna apply those down with a little bit of hot glue just for time's sake uh, and I'm picking them up with my little cutter bee tweezers there again I think those got a facelift too from EK success but these are the best scissors I mean tweezers ever if you don't own a pair get some so now I'm going to use my crop dial to set an eyelet there in the top it just is a really nice finished look and I'm going to take some just some scrap netting that was on my desk it's a little bit of tool and it was in that bucket little pieces like this go in the bucket so that I remember to use them and now I'm just gonna 
trim that off at the top and then make it look a little more weathered. So I'm taking some twine again, this was in the bucket, and I'm going to tie it here. Twine is an excellent uh, nautical element to add to your beachy themed layouts and tags. Uh, twine is uh, the best it because uh, you definitely see a lot of rope and twine around the beach areas too and it, I love the way it frays too it gets real rustic looking so then I'm going to just trim that down and then I'm going to apply a tiny bit of hot glue there at the base of the tag that's going to keep it from fraying out too much uh, this particular piece was a scrap and it was fraying quite a bit now I have this little charm and I'm going to add a little garment pin to it to hang it from the top. I love to have charms added to my tags. I think it adds a little bit of interest and jewelry to it. And uh, I love to use um, unusual type pieces. I often scour the clearance aisles for old jewelry, maybe mixed and matched jewelry. Like sometimes you can find some that's damaged, like the hooks have fallen off the earrings and it might not be an earring that I would wear, but it is an excellent charm for, for something. So in the last video, I had someone ask me to show them the back of the tag. So this is what I do. I just pick out either black gesso or white gesso, depending on the theme of the tag to cover up my backs. Um, it gives them a nice finished look and it gives me an opportunity to leave a message on the back or to write something and it gives it a nice clean look. Now I found a piece of eyelet trim. You know, it's only three inches wide. You'd think you would throw it away, but not Tanya. Um, so I've just placed it there at the bottom of the tag. Um, it'll move up in the frame in just a few minutes. Now I have a piece of that twine. I'm just going to add it to the base of that and it's going to give a nice transition between the tag and the eyelet lace and just also reinforce that twine that's up at the top it complements it really well and you know again it just pulls that nautical theme in with the twine I just love it so then I decided that my seahorse needed a little more texture so I'm going to use the Ranger Crackle Medium over the top of the seahorse and it's going to take at least 24 hours to dry but that's fine uh, you know I just left it to dry overnight and then I've also decided that my tag needed a little more um, I don't know texture or something around my shells so if I have this big thing of sea foam coming up over the ta over the flowers and things, I thought, well, pools of water would be really nice too. So I'm just going to take my glossy accents and touch around the base of all of my shells. And, it, it, and I dripped a few drips onto the flowers as well. So here's a close-up of the tag. I hope you've enjoyed hanging out with me today and you've learned a few new techniques. As always, there will be... A link to all of the supplies um, in the description box down below uh, there will be a blog post that accompanies this there's my full tag and um, if you've enjoyed this production please feel free to comment subscribe leave me a thumbs up this is how I know that I'm doing a good job so th thanks again for hanging out